Hi class, I'm going to talk to you guys today about a model called the Production Possibilities Curve. And we've got three objectives that we're going to try to accomplish with this little mini lecture here. First up, we all want to be clear on what the Production Possibilities Curve represents. You know what this model is. Second up, you're going to want to be clear on how to interpret all the different points that you would see on the graph. And then third, we're going to go through a quick problem showing how you might calculate the opportunity cost associated with producing one good or another. Okay, so to begin, you want to keep in mind that the production possibilities curve is a model related to production. So it's appropriately named, right? In fact, uh, this production possibilities curve is going to show you the limit of what a country can produce, right? So because nations have scarce resources, they can't keep producing more and more and more of goods. Right, there's a finite amount of production that can occur at any one point in time. The production possibilities curve, or the PPC, is going to show you where that limit is. Right? So the key thing to keep in mind is that you're talking about production. You don't yet want to be thinking about demand or prices of the good or anything, of, uh, anything like that. All right. A couple of uh, assumptions are important to note when you're dealing with the PPC, the production possibilities curve. First up, you want to note that along this PPC, you're assuming that a nation uses all of their resources. And what that means is that all the workers who could possibly be working are, are doing so. All the machinery that's available to produce these goods is being employed. All the natural capital that they have is being used. So think of operating along this curve as representing full employment of all resources. Secondly, we're going to assume that there's a fixed technology. And fixed technology here just means that the process that's used to make these various products is locked in place. So we draw this line based on what we know about these production techniques presently. Right. Third thing that we're going to assume here is that nations have what's called a fixed resource endowment. What that means is that we draw it based on what we know about the amount of labor that this nation has, the amount of machinery that it has. Uh, it's drawn based on our current knowledge of those factors of production. Okay, so that's what we want to keep in mind with the PPC. Let's slide the board over here and we can take a quick look at it. Um, so first you're going to want to take note of what we have on our axes here. We've got two goods. I just picked cheese and cars because that's kind of weird, I guess. Um, it can be any two goods. It's not important which goods you put on your axes here. The important thing to see is the trade-offs that exist when you're producing one versus the other. So as we go higher on the graph, it means that the nation is producing more cheese. As we go further to the right on the graph, it means that this nation is producing more cars in this case. All right. So as I said, the line here is showing us the limit on what's possible to produce. Right? And so I drew some points here in this graphical space so we can get some quick practice interpreting those various points. That's a common exam question that you might encounter. So first up, take note of point A and B. Right? The thing to note about these is that these are, of course, inside the line, within our production possibilities curve. Right? And the way to interpret that is that this is possible to produce currently. Right? So given what we know about this country's ability to produce, they could at make that much cheese and that, much, that many cars simultaneously. Same thing for point B. We say it's attainable, it's impossible to produce. Furthermore, it's inefficient. Right? We'll get to that more in a second later. Points C and D. Take note that those are above and beyond, past the production possibilities curve. Right? The interpretation with these types of points is that they're unattainable, meaning it's impossible to make that much cheese and that many cars at the same time. Right? So it's beyond our limit. That's pretty straightforward. That leaves us then with points like E and F. And you guys can see it, that's both on, that is going to be on the line. And so our interpretation here is that it, first up, it's attainable. Right? It is possible to make, say, 30 units of cheese and three cars at the same time. Uh, but more than that, we would describe those points as being efficient. And what that means is that there's no leftover resources. Um, there's no excess capacity that exists in terms of workers who are trying to get a job making cars or cheese. Uh, or no machinery that could potentially be used to, uh, in production. Right? We're at 100% capacity if you're operating along the production possibilities curve. Right? And so attainable and efficient is the language that you want to use. Okay. 
That leaves us with our last learning goal, and that is to be able to calculate the opportunity cost as you're moving from point to point along a PPC. Okay, so we've got some numbers here corresponding to point E and F that we'll be able to use. Key thing to see here in terms of the concept behind the model is that there's trade-offs that have to be made, right? Of course, if you want to make more cars, it means that there's going to be a trade-off in terms of the amount of cheese that is being produced. If you have a graph like this with actual numbers on it, you'll be able to say just how much cheese or cars must be sacrificed. Uh, so let's say we go from point E over to point F. This is a country that decides they need more cars for whatever, for whatever reason. And so they increase production. So you get one more car as you go from point E to F. To calculate the opportunity cost of that car, you want to look to all the cheese that must be sacrificed. Right? To produce one more car, this nation has to take some of those resources that were being used with cheese and switch them over to car manufacturing. Right? And you can see the difference here between these two quantities is 10. So it would be correct to say that the opportunity cost of the fourth car would be 10 units of cheese as you go from 30 down to 20. There you go.